everyone. Welcome to our devotion this Wednesday morning and we're going to wrap up the kind of parable that we try to illustrate using the passage in Mark 9 uh, about the father whose son had an evil spirit and the disciples couldn't uh, deliver the spirit and of course Jesus came along and did so and the father said if you can and Jesus picked up on that if you can and said all things are possible to those who believe and then he said help me in my unbelief and we said that there's like a postscript to this story and uh, if you carry on in the text you'll you'll see it um so we read that after Jesus had gone indoors uh his disciples asked him privately you know why couldn't we drive it out and I think that's just so true of us. Things don't go to plan. And so they want Jesus to explain why they didn't go to plan. And they don't ask him there, but they, they wait and ask him in private where attention isn't kind of drawn to their failure. And so they say, Jesus, as you guess, we struggle to get rid of those demons. Do you think that you could give us a few kind of pointers for future encounters? Uh, did we not shout loud enough? Did we not use the right oil? Did we request rather than command them to leave? You know, what is the problem? What techniques did we not employ? And Jesus says that this is one of those demons that, that only comes out through prayer. And what a strange statement. Uh, like there's some kind of other evil spirit that doesn't require prayer. And the irony in the story is that it appears the disciples had no doubts uh, they, they certainly had faith. We don't know how much faith. It doesn't seem they had much faith. Uh, if faith were nothing more than feeling confident and uncertain about something, then they certainly uh, had it. Uh, they just were not praying, you know. They, they were kind of relying on their own strength. And Jesus is not talking about a technique here. He's not talking about some magic words that they, they didn't uh, employ. Now, he's saying, no, it's, it's about God. It's, it's God is the one who, who brings healing. God is the one who delivers. I mean, when you think about it, the other religious leaders didn't pray. The crowd didn't pray. Uh, who was the one person in the story that, that was praying? Who was the one person who, who turned to Jesus and asked him for help? And, and that's exactly what prayer is, is calling on the name of the Lord for help. It was the Father. And in that one knee-knocking, faltering, hesitant, unassured request he, that he brought to Jesus, the man did one thing right. He persisted in prayer. He just keep, kept bringing his bucket to the Lord one more time, one more time, one more time. He, in fact, was like a prayer Olympian. His prayer will never become a hymn like a Hannah or a Mary. But it was enough for Jesus. And so let me ask you, what is your mega prayer or Olympian prayer today? What is that request that is so big, so beyond your power? The one thing that's maybe broken your heart. The, the one that the truth is you're not even sure it could ever happen. Would you be willing to, like the Father, persist in prayer? If you bring him a thimble... He'll fill it. If you bring him a bucket, he'll probably fill it as well. How big is a mustard seed? Big enough to come to Jesus and ask. Big enough to just be real, to be yourself. Big enough to keep persisting in prayer, no matter what. And so the next uh, parable uh, from Matthew 13 comes from the culinary world. Let us read it. He told him still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 30 kilograms of flour until it worked all through the dough. Just very short and sweet. There's the parable. Woman is baking bread, but it's not leavened yet. Unleavened bread is hard and dry and it's actually quite tasteless if you've ever tried it. And so she puts in a little yeast, just a little lump of leaven. What happens when that takes place? There's like this chemical process and it fills the dough with thousands of tiny little pockets of carbon dioxide. And as the bread is heated, each little pocket expands 
and the whole loaf begins to rise. And soon the whole house is just filled with this amazing aroma of bread. And I'm sure those of you who bake bread will know just how wonderful that aroma is. So what's striking to Jesus' listeners is, is just the amount of bread that he's talking about here. We'd expect this woman to be making a loaf or two, but he says she uses three measures of flour. Now that would be roughly, as we read in the passage, 30 kilograms. So add 42 or so cups of water and you'd end up with a, a little over a 45 kg uh, lump of dough. Now she's making enough bread for the entire community. And so Jesus' listeners would think this, this huge amount of bread can be leavened by just this tiny bit of yeast. Something so large is going to be transformed by something that is seemingly insignificant. Sure, Jesus says, just try it. In the Greek, the word translated mixed, as in the women mixing the yeast into the dough, is the same word used as to hide something. We get our word cryptic from the same word. So Jesus says the woman hides the leaven in the dough. It is undetectable. And Jesus uses that word quite intentionally. The way the kingdom works is not always immediately recognizable to everybody. There's something hidden about it. It doesn't come in the way that we had expected to. Small beginnings, unlikely sources, but irresistible growth. No matter how small the leaven, no matter how big the loaf, once the leaven's in the dough, it's a foregone conclusion. The outcome is inevitable. It's just a matter of time. So friends, Jesus shares these parables with those who are experiencing discouragement or disappointment like you and, and like me. These people have been looking forward to a day when they would no longer be oppressed, no longer be under the corrupt rule of Rome. They've been hoping for the coming Messiah for some 600 years, but in this time God had been silent. Their prayers seem futile. In fact, the whole of the Old Testament is a story of of hope because people knew the world they lived in was not the way that it was meant to be. Does that sound familiar? Not meant to be. And so right in the beginning, uh, if you go back to uh, even before in the story of uh, before Adam and Eve are banished from the garden because of their sin, we, we are given the message of hope from Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So God tells them that the woman will have offspring and that the serpent, the evil one, will strike at his heel, but the offspring of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. In time to come, the people of God came to understand this to be a reference, of course, to the Messiah. Jesus would enter this world and on the cross deal a fatal blow to the enemy through his death and resurrection. Death would no longer have any sting. The curse on humankind would be broken forever. And so we have this glimpse of hope right at the outset of humankind. And so tomorrow we get to look at a few more examples from the Old Testament and, and even the New and kind of wrap up the, these couple of parables with some closing observations. And so we trust that, yeah, that we will have the, the, the faith that we need, that we will be uh, those who persist in prayer. Because when you think about it, the more you persist in prayer, the deeper and the stronger your faith becomes. And that's what was lacking with the disciples. They were relying on, on themselves rather than on God. And so let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for these two parables that just remind us that, that from small beginnings, from things that are seemingly insignificant, that you can do great things. Small amount of yeast can can fill that dough and, and cause uh, a whole lot of dough to, to rise. And in the same way that a mustard seed that is planted in the ground can, can just bring about uh, a tree that 
is one of the biggest trees around. And we just thank you, Lord, that that you are calling us to have that kind of faith, just a, a mustard seed of, of faith that that even from from a little that we can accomplish a lot and we can move those mountains if we only trust you and we we all too often take things into our own hands like the disciples perhaps did and and we do not turn to you and ask for help and we pray lord god that we might persist like that father did turn to you and and ask for 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 help in our time of need and so bless us and help us to take these truths and to to apply them in our lives and as we wrap up these parables tomorrow lord may we just continue to to live them out in our lives as we put our faith and our trust in you and so we bless you pray your blessing on this day in jesus name amen amen so bless you all wherever you are and uh yeah we'll catch up with you on the morrow cheers